All right, today we have both the Audi RS3 and the BMW M340i, both two high-performance cars designed to give you an exhilarating driving experience. It's the battle between the EA885 engine and the B58 engine. Yeah, yeah, this isn't the full-fledged M car. You should be comparing an M car with an RS car, right? But a full-fledged M3 is much more expensive, sitting around $40,000 more than the RS3. And I think the M340 would put up a pretty fair fight considering that both cars are about $66,000 US. All right, let's go for a drive. Actually, never mind. Let's go to the Audi first. In this Audi, we have the E855 2.5 liter inline five cylinder engine. And man, this thing sounds good. It has such a nice gurgle to it. It's like a baby Huracan motor. And this makes 394 horsepower and 354 pound feet of torque through a seven speed dual clutch transmission. It is rated at 3.5 seconds, 60 miles per hour compared to the 4.1 seconds in the M340. Yeah, the M340 only makes 382 horsepower and 369 pound-feet on paper though, because BMW obviously underrates their numbers. On the dyno, they realistically make a little over 400, maybe 420 horsepower, but also the M340 is 400 pounds heavier than the RS3, coming in around 4,000 pounds. Both cars are all-wheel drive though, except they're very different all-wheel drive systems. BMW is an X-Drive car, so it sends most of the power to the back because it's a rear-wheel drive based platform. Once you put traction in sport mode though, this thing will kick out pretty easily, especially when it's raining like it is right now. Which is unlike the RS3 because this is a front-wheel drive based platform car. It won't oversteer as much unless you get the new 2022 plus RS3 with a new differential on the back that can back the torque around. So that one can oversteer quite a bit. The RS3 feels significantly lighter, but because it's a front wheel drive based platform, it doesn't rotate as precisely as the M340 with the rear wheel drive based X-Drive, which naturally makes it feel like a rear wheel drive car. The RS3 is super nimble. It's like a little pocket rocket, especially because of the compact size, but it drives like a monster. While the Audi steering is much lighter, there's actually more feedback than the M340, which the M340 can feel pretty numb sometimes. The RS3 gets a Haldex Quattro system, which you can find in pretty much all the transverse engine mounted Audis. It can send power to the back when needed, but it's naturally just a front wheel drive base system, which means it does understeer a little bit, especially when you're powering out through turns but can also oversteer just a little bit. Not as much as the M340 though, but it is a little fun too. The RS torque splitter does reduce most understeer, but it can still understeer slightly, especially when you're trying to power out of a turn. The system actively monitors when the road's wet or when you just need more traction and sends power very quickly. You won't even notice the front wheel drive part of the car. And the M340i is much heavier. You can definitely feel it, especially when you're turning this thing. Doing a three-point turn in the M340, unlike the RS3, it feels like you're maneuvering the Titanic. 
but that doesn't mean it's any slower in the corners because this thing rotates so well, especially without a 50-50 weight distribution. Like you feel like you're turning from the center axis of the car, unlike the RS3 where you feel like you're turning more from the front of the car. The best performance cars throughout history, whether it's F1 or NASCAR, have just been real wheel drive cars for a good reason. The RS3 might be lighter and more nimble, but because it's still a front wheel drive based platform with no LSC, unlike in this car, it just doesn't make it nearly as fun as the M340. The seven speed dual clutch transmission is much snappier than the ZF8 and the M340. All the shifts are lightning fast, but I think the BMW shifts sound a little bit better. so well you just have an immense amount of grip especially for the fact that it's a little wet right now gives you a lot of confidence when you're taking it around these turns the m340 brakes are mediocre with the four pistons and especially with that extra weight you can definitely feel it but the six piston brembos on the rs3 stops you very quickly perfect for this car and you do have the optional ceramic brakes with the RS car. The B58 and the EA855 both have forged cranks and are both single turbo cars, with the B58 having a twin scroll turbo unlike the single scroll turbo in the RS3 engine. The B58 also has a water to air intercooler embedded in the intake right after the throttle body, which is pretty cool. But because it is a newer motor, you do get a lot more cool innovations that both combine the previous N55 and also a lot from the 2JZ, which isn't necessarily just good for tuning, but it's made for reliability, even though it ended up being really good for tuners out there. While the B58 is a cast aluminum block that weighs 308 pounds, the RS3 EA855 motor is also cast aluminum, but it weighs actually a heavier weight at 352 pounds, even with that extra cylinder on the M340. But still, both engines are actually pretty light for what they are. With that B58 though, you do have more power on demand because there is an extra cylinder and also because the turbo in this car is a single scroll turbo, which the BMW has a twin scroll. So the turbo lag is there. Yeah. Stock versus stock, they both make very similar power. And tune for tune, they also make very similar power but both, you can push an immense amount of power on both cars. Although the inline five from the RS3 might just be one of the most legendary motors made by Audi, and the fact that it sounds freaking amazing, the B58 just has a more reputable reliability history, especially because it's literally in almost every single BMW you know. And it's so reliable, even Toyota uses it in their Supras. And since the B58 and B48 have been embedded in a bunch of BMWs, BMW now ranks as the third most reliable vehicle right after Toyota and Lexus by Consumer Reports 2023. Long gone are the days where your N54 was blowing up left and right. The fuel economy on the RS3 is all right. It does about 19 miles per gallon in the city and 28 miles per gallon on the highway for a combined average of 23 miles per gallon. The M340 technically weighs about 400 pounds more, which you would think would burn more gas, especially with that extra cylinder. But the M340 achieves 23 in the city and 32 miles per gallon on the highway for a combined average of 26. I feel like a lot of that is because of the extra cylinder, so the engine doesn't have to rev as high to maintain the same speed. In terms of suspension, the RS3 does have a drive mode selector, so you can control the weight of the steering and also how stiff the car is. There's a comfort mode, auto mode, dynamic mode, and an individual mode. When you have in comfort, it's actually not that bad. Like it's very dailyable. And when you have it in dynamic mode, it is pretty, pretty stiff. So that's good. The difference between comfort and sport mode on the Audi is much more noticeable than the BMW. All right, to do a quick launch control, we need to put it in dynamic mode, traction and sport mode, put on the brake, and okay. This thing is fast at 60.
from the 0 to 60 results in both cars. Stock for stock results on both winter tires, rain, and about 45 degree weather. The RS3 did a 3.78, while the M340 did a 4.02, which is better than what BMW claims for stock. And this is in the wet. Three runs for each car and using the fastest time for both cars. The difference is only 0.24 seconds, which isn't significant at all. The RS3 is only slightly faster by just a hair. But the M340 is just way more fun because you can do full out power slides and donuts in it, even for an X-Drive car. For me, I'd sacrifice a little bit of nimbleness and speed for the more fun BMW. Aesthetically, from the exterior, it really just comes down to personal preference. Whether you want a smaller, more compact car, or you want the mid-size sedan, both to me look great. I think both cars look amazing, but the M340 has much more aggressive body lines with sharper angles and lighting designs than the RS3, which looks more rounded. Even the exhaust tips carry the same design. The RS3 has these rounded, iconic RS oval tips, while the M340 has these more angular, hexagonal exhaust tips. They both have real intake vents with brake cooling. BMW does get optional laser lights and these really cool 3D taillights, which the RS gets a very unique grill different from the A3 and S3, and of course its signature Audi lights. Both these cars are on 19 inch wheels as well. These cars look amazing in my opinion, but I do like the beefier, wider stance on the M340, even for a non-M car, it just has more presence than the RS3. The RS3 interior has been out for years now, especially with that 2022 plus interior. So this is a little outdated, but it's actually aged pretty well. And same with the M340, there is a new iDrive 8 design in the inside. So both cars have aged pretty well actually. There's a lot more things going on in the M340 tech wise, but you do have pretty much everything you need. There's Apple CarPlay, there's a very nice digital dash, there's blind spot monitoring. Um, other than that, there's not really much to it. The seats are pretty nice, but they are completely manual. So you're gonna have to do everything manually. And there's a whole knob for the back, which takes a little bit of time to recline. But the seats are pretty nice. They have diamond stitching on them with a little RS logo. And the steering wheel is very nice. It's much smaller than the M340 and it's lined with Alcantara on the side. And there's Alcantara on the door as well. The driving position is pretty high. I'm only about five foot eight and the seat is in the lowest position. And when you sit like a normal person, you're still pretty high up compared to the BMW. It's pretty simple, but pretty much everything you need. The M340 driving position is much more sports car feeling because you can sit so much lower and how the cabin surrounds you. And these seats are powered. And you also have adjustable bolstering, which make it pretty much just as bolstered as our S3 seats. There's a lot more going on inside the M340 with a ton more tech features, such as backup assist, 360 camera, self-parking, drive recorder, digital key, and the MMI is just way more updated. Both cars do get a digital dashboard and both look great. The Audi seats feel more sporty, but they're not powered for weight savings. The M340 seats have nice adjustable bolsters, and they still have pretty nice cool blue stitching with little M badges on the seats. The 2022 RS3 now does have a lot more tech though, but it's still missing some stuff that you would get in the M340. It feels a lot more like a luxury car in the M340. Back seats in the RS3 is enough for hauling children around and quick trips with adults, but the M340 is much more spacious in the back, more headroom, more legroom, and it has its own dedicated HVAC controls back here as well, along with some USB-C ports, which you don't get in the RS3. The trunk on the RS3, wait, it's not the M340, you gotta open it manually. Opens up to about 10 cubic feet of space, which is actually pretty small. You can probably fit two suitcases in here, but the M340 trunk is much, much bigger. Yeah, the RS3 might not have the nicer interior or anything, but this is where you get your money's worth. 
on roads like these. The chassis tuning is just incredible. The way the suspension is set up is perfect. The RS3 is just a highly sought after car, especially compared with the M340 because of how hard it is to get one of these. And it's just much more unique, especially with that inline five. You don't really see that anywhere else except from Audi. It's made for car enthusiasts who prioritize handling, performance, and driving dynamics over practicality and comfort. And still, it's a four-door car, and you still have a trunk, and you can still daily this car perfectly fine. And this thing just goes. Yeah. This is a great car. And it sounds so good. The M340 might not be as light and nimble and as good of a performance car as the RS3, but it wins in practicality, comfort, tech, features, and pretty much overall, I think is a better all around car. But if you want something almost just as good as the RS3 in terms of speed and handling, but also have a much better blend of comfort, tech, fuel economy, and practicality, you should definitely get the M340. Ultimately, the choice between these two cars comes down to personal preference. But either way, you can't go wrong with either of these cars. They're both very impressive machines. Thanks for watching.